Okay, this first example, this is what a voltage drop problem looks like on the heavy battery cables. Even though it's hot all the time, you can't say, hey, that's a good test. It's not, there's no current flow. So um, go ahead and crank that, Caleb. All right, ready? Yep. Cranking. Nice, perfect example. Perfect example of a voltage drop. The fact that this light goes out when we're cranking tells us our voltage drop is occurring on the heavy gauge wire. This does not need a starter. So I'm on the eyelet now. You crank it. Nice. See how the eyelet stays lit? Go ahead, crank it again. Okay. That means our voltage drop is right here, literally right here. Nice. Go ahead, crank it. That's awesome. Go ahead, crank it. Crank it. All right. So literally all we need to do um, is take that nut off and clean it up and tighten it back up and this thing's gonna start. Okay. And that should be enough. You think it'll start? I think it'll start now. So let's talk about a few mistakes that you can make in this first one. And that is number one, that you didn't go to the stud on the starter. If you went to the eyelet first, that eyelet stayed lit the whole time, telling you basically you would have needed a starter motor. So make sure you go to the stud. The stud is what the starter is going to see. The eyelet is not, as you can see, you can have a voltage drop problem in between them. The second one, a common issue, when you check that hot cable, the battery post that's hot all the time, what people don't understand is that that circuit must be loaded for that test to be accurate. It's not good enough to just check it static without cranking the engine over. You have to hold the key in the crank position when you are testing that wire to see a voltage drop. All right, this next one has a bad block ground. So doing some basic checks first. I'm using a voltmeter this time, going to the heavy battery post, the heavy cable and uh, you see I'm connected to battery ground for all of my tests, that's really important too. We'll talk more about that later. And the key here again, it is hot all the time. You have to crank the engine over for this test to be accurate. My friend cranked the engine and nothing changed. No noise, no clicks, no nothing, but he's holding it in the crank position and voltage did not change, so our problem is not on the heavy gauge circuit. Okay, for this next part, it's gonna get a little strange. Remember, we have a bad block ground, but this is the solenoid test, the smaller gauge wire, and what we're gonna see, just with the key on, is we have an unusual voltage, which is back feeding through the block, through the starter motor, that's what this eight volts is here. Um, then I turn the key off, back on, so you saw zero, and I'm gonna crank it. You're gonna see this is gonna jump up to battery voltage. You see battery voltage on that circuit cranking. Battery voltage on the other heavy gauge wire cranking. Our two main wires are good. So what did someone do? They threw a starter in the car. Didn't need a starter. That eight volts is a telltale here. Now we're gonna check the block ground next. So I'm gonna connect my meter right to the block, just picking something on the block. This happens to be the thermostat housing. I mentioned in the video it was the starter ground. Well, the starter ground's on the block. Um, my meter's connected to battery ground still, so we're doing a ground to ground voltage drop test. Of course it should be zero, should be zero. What do we see? There's my 8.3 volts. Watch what it looks like when I crank it over, it's even worse. So there's key off, nothing's loaded right now. With the key on, you're gonna have certain loads that are active, engine computer be one of them, uses the block for a ground. There's key on 8.3, there's cranking 11.6 on the block itself. That's some crazy stuff. So now the next thing I show in this video is a test light connected to ground. And we're gonna do the same check, just test light to ground, not battery positive. I'm touching positive to show you at lights, but test light to the aluminum housing of the cylinder head. And that's key on and there's cranking on the block. That's crazy. <laughs> 
That's awesome though. But this is test we can all do on any car. I'm gonna show you another one. Same check, super quick. I guess the last thing here is let me show you the ground broken. Hard to tell by that image. It's broken right at the connector where it's crimped together. There it is. Bad block ground. What are the symptoms? No click, no crank, new battery, new starter. Didn't fix it. Bad block ground. All right, on this one, we have another bad block ground. And so I'm just showing you, again, a quick way to check it using an incandescent test light um, a, attached to battery negative. I showed you there, I touched battery positive, it lights. And I'm going to the block. So I'm going battery ground to engine block. And the next thing you're gonna see with a light attached, I go inside the car, I turn the key on. As soon as I turn the key on, before I crank it, the light lights kind of dimly. We got some other modules and stuff that are using that block as a ground, so we're kind of loading it in that sense. And then I hit the key in the crank position, look how bright it gets. That's the most load you can put on a block is from the starter. Bad block ground, right off the bat. And the next uh, clip here, I'm just attaching jumper cables from the battery to the block. Watch the test light as soon as I connect the jumper cable. Look, notice the test light goes out. Right, because we now have a ground. Let's listen to a crank now. So pretty cool stuff. No crank, no click, no nothing. That was the symptoms of it. We're done. This is a bad block ground, um, and I don't have a shot, I don't think, on this one of where that ground was. You can watch the full case study at a different time. This is just quick identification. This is what it would look like too if you touch on the starter housing. It would look the same way. The test light would light when you crank it over. That starter has no ground. Okay, this is a good one. This is on a Cadillac, um, doing some quick measurements up front, uh, right on the power distribution box. And the reason I'm doing my measurements there is uh, the battery is in the trunk. I am connected to the engine block. You can see my black lead has a red clip on it. I'm clipped to the block for my ground. I'm reading 12.5 volts. I turn the key on on this Cadillac. We're gonna see something crazy here. Look, it dropped to two volts with the key on. This doesn't crank, fuel pumps running all the time, some weird stuff. What this looks like is a battery voltage feed problem. But check this out. Moving my ground lead now to the frame instead of the block and notice the voltage rises. I'm, I'm, I haven't moved my positive lead, it's in the same location. I just moved my negative lead to the frame which has a good ground, but the block doesn't. So that means the block has elevated voltage of over 10 volts. Remember, a voltmeter reads difference in potential. So if the black lead is connected to 10 and the red lead is connected to 12, what does the voltmeter read? It reads two volts. This is a bad block ground. Guys, the main point with this one, if you didn't hear anything else, when it comes to voltage drop testing a starting system if you are connected to anything but battery ground for electrical testing it can get you in trouble when you have bad grounds because it will look like low voltage when in actuality it is a bad ground on the frame on the body on the block guys please for all of your tests when in doubt go to battery negative and that means even if you have to run a jumper wire to battery negative that's what you need to do one of my favorite no crank videos on this hyundai by the way i'll put links on all these videos in the description this one i'm turning the key nothing's happening no click no crank no nothing just pointing out uh, check engine light being on as a guide. We use that for a guide to things. Next step is to do some basic checks and putting the car in neutral, checking the part neutral switch, trying it again, no change, doesn't crank in neutral, doesn't crank in park. Moving on to some other quick tests. As I stated before, let's use the headlights as a guide. Unfortunately on this one, watch, we turn the headlights on 
and then when we crank it over, the headlights go out. This is a normal condition on this car. It's intended to do that. Uh, some cars will not leave the headlights on, so let's use the dome light instead. Let's do the same thing. Looking at the dome light, dome lights do not dim whatsoever during cranking. This is not a battery problem. So next step, I'm just using uh, some other quick tests, doing a tap test on the starter itself to no avail. I have a friend inside cranking it for me while I'm smacking on the starter with a long screwdriver. And uh, yeah, nothing happens there. So it is time to do some testing. All right, so starters in the back. That's the solenoid one highlighted there. And the battery post is right there. We're gonna do our checks in that location using a test light connected to battery ground. Always check our light. We check the heavy post first. This one is hot all the time. Stays lit the whole time. Hitting the key in the crank position. So our battery post is fine. Again, I'm on the stud. We now know why. We go into the starter S post, the solenoid post, and it does not light. We have found our problem. There is no voltage on that. So a little bit of a wild goose chase on this because our relay is corroded. This is what controls power to the S post of the starter. And I focus on the relay and some checking at the box. And what I ended up doing is really going on a little bit of a wild goose chase because our problem was not here. Even though this was corroded in this location and uh, you'll see in this next clip I flipped the box over. We're doing some checks underneath. Great, great video. If you want to know how a relay works, how it functions, how to test it, this is a great video for that too. Yeah, it's at this point I figure out my wiring down right there at the S post is faulty right at the connection. If I would have checked that wire, back probed it, I would have found voltage there and I may have put a starter in this. And this just shows again how important it is to check the stud or the terminal first. And we had no power there, but on the backside had I checked the connector, it would have been good all this was was a bad connection right there at the S post of the starter. So we saw what a bad connection looks like on the battery post earlier, and now we see what a bad connection looks like on the S post. Again, you wanna go to the end line when you do these checks. Don't be happy with just a check on the wire. You have to be on the stud or the terminal for accuracy. This is just a bad connection right there. This one's ridiculous. This is a 2011 Taurus, uh, no crank situation. We filmed this back in like 2018. Again, I'll put links for all these videos. You guys can watch it. Um, this is an intermittent no crank. It has a new starter and a new cable put in by the customer before it was brought to this shop. Got a battery charger on this, so your voltage le levels will be a little bit higher in some of these shots. Uh, and then I noticed the new battery cable, there's some janky stuff uh, on this cable and, and what they did, I am not sure. Wait till you see this, but I don't like the cable. We're going down to the starter next. Oh yeah, I'm pointing out, this melted right here. You see that? Like against the box? There's, that shouldn't be there. All right, down at the starter, on the BAT post to start with. I'm on the heavy stud, reading 13.4 volts. Remember, again, we have a uh, battery charger on this. And then I'm pointing out some janky adapter in there. That shouldn't be doing it like that. There we go. Crank it over. You see my voltage drop down to zero, like 0 0.5 there for a second. Um, yeah. Huge voltage drop. This does not need a starter, guys. Loaded circuit. Remember that even though this post is hot all the time, that isn't good enough of a test. You have to crank the engine over to get the circuit loaded. You see voltage dropping every time we're cranking it. This is a main cable problem. One more thing though, let's make sure. What are we doing here? We're on the eyelet now just to make sure that we don't have a stud issue like I showed you early on. And notice my voltage is still dropping on the eyelet. And so our issue is definitely in the cable. It's not right there 
on the stud and so we're focused on whatever this thing is in here i'm doing a measurement before and then i'm doing a measurement after and i'm having a difficult time recreating it now because i'm wiggling the uh, cable right where our connection problem is so in this next shot we're just going to open this up and show you guys what's in here somebody pieced together a positive battery cable instead of replacing the whole cable all right so i'm cutting the tape off of this and uh, yeah, somebody put some kind of a heavy uh, terminal on here and two ends, and that's right where our voltage drop is. It's right here. It's right here. So I'm connecting my meter on after it to show you the voltage drop, and then I, I, again, I'm having trouble because I wiggled this a bunch and restored connection. Uh, that's all this was. This is a shoddy repair by the customer. Voltage drops, guys. Loaded circuit voltage drops. Easy stuff. We have a 2002 Mini Cooper with a 1.6 turbo engine. The complaint with this vehicle is it was bought at an auction and it will not start. The starter was replaced and the battery was replaced before it came to us and it cranks very slowly so the first thing is, I'm going to let you hear what the engine sounds like. All right, cool. Battery's in the trunk on this. I'm using an inductive ammeter on the battery cable. We'll measure start, starter current with that, and then you can see I'm connected directly to the battery itself for our voltage level. Okay, great. I'm reading between 300 and 400 vo uh, amp surges on this starter. This is a huge amount of current flow. But when you have this kind of amperage, that confirms your battery's fine, your starter's fine, your cables are fine. There is something mechanical going on here. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull a couple spark plugs out and we're going to listen to the way it cranks. We're actually we're going to pull all four of them out and listen to the way it cranks with the spark plugs removed. Go ahead and uh, crank this over now. All the spark plugs are out. Let's take a listen to it. Okay, hang on. My amperage is even higher. That was like over 400 amps. I'm going to attempt to turn this by hand and you will see that I can't at all. I cannot budge this thing. It is that tight. It looks like that harmonic balancer wants to turn. One of these drive pulleys are seized up on this belt. So we're going to remove the belt and then we're going to redo our tests. We pulled the serpentine belt off, turned all the pulleys by hand. We cannot turn the alternator. So we haven't tried to crank it yet. I still have all the plugs removed. We have the coil disabled. I want you to take a listen. All right. That sounds a lot better. Let's get the plugs put back in it, see if this thing runs. Before we try to start this, I just want to give you guys an amperage reading here. This is with the plugs reinstalled. Go ahead and crank that. Okay. All right, that's better. Still have a lot of hash in here. I don't know exactly where that average is. Maybe around 100 amps of current compared to three, 400, almost 500 amps before. That's definitely a fix as far as getting this thing cranking normally. I think this thing's actually going to run. <laughs> That's awesome. It needs an alternator, no question about it. Not a seized up engine. I think the lesson here is this. When we have a car like this with excessive amperage and we have a, a crankshaft pulley that you cannot turn by hand, you better be thinking about your accessory Pulleys, take the serpentine belt off. That would be one. Another one I've seen, I mentioned, is I had a starter that was jammed into a flywheel and it was on a Volkswagen. Now the difference with that one is it did not crank at all. It was a click for the starter, a heavy click. And we had about seven or 800 amps of current on that one. And when I tried to turn that one by hand, I couldn't turn it. That one ultimately ended up being a faulty starter. We need to think about these things before we rush judgment on a seized up engine. So that's the lesson here with this. Another one too was showing voltage and current from a battery really tells you a lot 
about the car. If someone would have done those tests to begin with, they would have never put a starter and battery in this car. Last one, favorite one. This is my mom, say hello to mom. This is a no crank video everyone needs to watch. Now, what are you doing, mom? My car died. <laughs> so, mom thinks she needed a jump. Let's watch the dome light while we crank it. Go ahead, mom. No change at all in that light. Doesn't even dim right. whatsoever, and so, what that's suggesting is it is not a battery, Mom, right? All right, so the next one I told her over the phone is let's make sure, let's see if this thing will, will crank in um, in neutral. So show us that, Mom, just make, we're checking your park neutral switch real quick. Shift in or lock. Okay. And then go ahead and crank it. Nothing there. All right, go back to park. Okay. So it looks like maybe starter, yeah, starter cable, something. I'm going under the hood. Pop your hood, Mom. Oh, sweet, the starter's right up top. Okay, that's awesome. Hey, Mom, hold it in the crank position. Tell me when you're cranking it. Okay, I'm cranking. Hold it in the crank position. <laughs> Dan, Scanner Danner is my son, and he can fix anything. <laughs> What? What happened? Okay, I want to say hi to all your subscribers. I read every single post and I enjoy them all. So, it's mom. <laughs> we say hi to mom. We bailed mom out in the parking lot of Trax Farm. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, mom. Okay. Oh, sweet. Funny. <laughs>